Welcome to this Excel Stat short video on Principal Component Analysis, or PCA. Principal Component Analysis is a descriptive or exploratory method. It has three objectives. The first one is to reduce the original variables into a lower number of orthogonal, non-correlated variables, or factors. We also call them eigenvectors. Then we can look into the variable relationship and look at the correlation among the original variables and also between the variables and the factors. Then we can look at the grouping of samples and visual proximities among statistical units. But PCA is only a change of variable space. And we change the space to look at the data differently. And the way we look at it counts. So here if I ask you if this person is sad or happy, you may say sad. But if you look at it in a different way, you may say happy. So here we have a data matrix X with n samples and p variables. If we look at the samples, we can visualize them in a space of p variables and n points. We can do the same, but looking at the variables and visualize them in a space of n samples. So let's go back to geometry and look into the projection of a point on an axis. So here we have a 3D space and we have a cloud of points. And if we want to select a new vector, for example, that one, the vector u. And here are the coordinates of the vector u. And we can get the normalized ve vector. So then we can project any point on this vector. So here we have p i, and we project it here on the axis. So it's orthogonal here. So when we do this projection, p i add uh, three coordinates, here 3, 2, and 5 for each variable. And then we can get the um, coordinate of pi on the vector, its projection. So here we will get 5.65. So from a dimension of three coordinates, we only get one coordinate when we do the projection. So we have reduced the dimension. It's exactly what we do in PCA. So we look for the axis to use to project the samples, but we don't take any of them. We just take the one that minimizes the loss of information or variability for the cloud of points. So doing that means that we are trying to get this distance, the point, to its projection as small as possible. So that is this equation. We can also do it and say that we try to maximize dimension from the origin to the projection. So if you maximize that, in the same way, we are trying to get the most of the variability with our vector. But PCA is an iterative process, so we just don't need one factor, we may need more. So when we have one factor, we are going to look for another one that will explain the variability that is remaining. There is one constraint. Uh, we need to have factors that are orthogonal. So here we have a factor 1, and we can project all the samples on that factor, and then we can rotate the axis. So we rotate it, and we will find a plan that is orthogonal, and what we see in that plan is the remaining uh, variability that was not explained. So if we take the purple vector, it will also reach the maximum of variability, and that is our factor 2. Then we can project the sample on that vector, and then there will be still some remaining variability that we can try to explain. Now if we go back to geometry and try to explain the projection of variables. So here we have two variables, x and y, and we have three samples. If we look at the two variables, x and y, in the space of the samples, uh, there are two things that are important to define them. There is a vector length, and the vector length represents the variability of the variable. If you are using centered variables, we can call it the deviance. Also, the angle between the two vectors, x and y, uh, expresses the correlation between the variables. So for standardized variable, it is the coefficient r. 
So if we go back to PCA, we have the matrix X, and then we change the variable space into factors. So then we can look at the samples in a new variable space that is defined by the factor. So here we have factor 1 and factor 2, which is the first principal plane. And then we can look at the correlation between the variable and the factors. So the principal components or factors, they are orthogonal, uncorrelated, and are also a linear combination of the standardized variable x, so the original variable. Here we can take an example. So we are going to take the example of cars from 1989, and we have 24 samples, or 24 different cars, and we have six descriptive variables such as engine displacement, power, speed, weight, length, weight. The first thing to do is to get the PCA menu, which is in Analyzing Data menu. So you click on the Principal Component Analysis PCA option, and then you will have to select the variable. So we will take all the samples and all the variables and we have to say which data format we are using. So here uh, we are using the observations. So we will need to make a weighting. By default we have the Pearson which is the correlation and that the one that is interesting us. So we will leave the default option here. Then we can keep the sheet for having the result display in a new sheet. And then we have to say if we have the variable levels. So here the variable levels are here and we are using them. So we leave that ticked. And then for the observation levels we can select this column with the car. There are no weights, so we don't need to do anything here, and we can go to the next tab. Here we have some options. Um, here I will ask to compute for the maximum number of factors, and I will not select any rotation because I don't need that right now. Uh, there are no additional data, so we don't need to add them. We don't have any missing data, so here we can leave it to do not accept missing data. And then we have the output. So we will ask for almost all the tests and the output that we can get. Same thing for the charts. We can leave the default option and we'll get a lot of results. So then I click on OK, it's going to compute the result, here continue. Here I can select which um, scores I want to see. So I'm going to select factor 1 and factor 2, and maybe as well factor 2 and factor 3. So I select here, even though factor 2 and 3 might not bring much information, but just to see. So I click on Done, and they are going to be displayed. Here I get a menu. If I want to go directly to one of the results, I can just navigate here and go directly to it. But I will just get them one after the other. So the first one is Summary Statistics. So it just gives you, uh, for each variable, some statistics the number of observations, the number of missing value, minimum, maximum, mean, and standard deviation. Then we have the correlation matrix. So already here we can see that a lot of the variables are correlated. Uh, you can see that the power and the engine displacement are quite correlated with a correlation of 0 0.86. Same for the speed and power, they are very correlated. 
weight and engine displacement are quite correlated too. So as you see, we are going to deal with the data set with a lot of correlation. Then we have the eigenvalues. So we get the eigenvalue and the variability, and then the cumulative uh, variability. So factor one uh, has an eigenvalue of 4.6. Here, the sum of the eigenvalue is supposed to be the number of variables that we have in the data set. So here I can just show you if I do the sum of this line, I should get 6 because that's the number of variable. So here when we have such a big eigenvalue, it means that factor 1 is explaining a lot of variability. And as you see, it's 77% of variability that is explained in factor 1. Then factor 2 is uh, 15%, and then factor 3 decreased to only 4%. So we can look at it in the script plot where we have both the eigenvalue, where you can see all the drop, and you can see that uh, we have here a big drop, and then another drop, and then it's quite flat. And same thing for the cumulative variability. We quite reach 100% uh, of variability very fast. So here we might just need two components to explain this data set. Then we have the eigenvector, so that's how they are um, computed. So that's the coefficient for engine displacement for factor 1. So as you see here, all of the variables have a positive contribution to factor 1. Then on factor 2 there is some differences. So we have the three first ones that are positive and then the three last ones that have a negative contribution. So you can see that this, the size, which is most of those variables, is negative on factor 1, and here it's positive for the power, uh, I will say for the um, technicity of the car, it's positive contribution on factor 2. Then we can have the correlation between the variable and factors. So same thing, it's the same interpretation. So uh, you can see here uh, we have uh, speed, power, and engine displacement on this side, and here weight, weight, and length. Well, in the end, we don't need uh, factor 2 and factor 3, so we don't need to analyze that. We can continue. Oh, here we have uh, the scores, but it's easier to see it on the score plot. So here is the plot that is interesting us. So I'm just going to copy it and put it bigger here. So so we can see all the samples are positioned uh, differently. So if you remember, on that side we had the size of the car that was quite big. So here all those cars are quite big, but those ones are quite small. Then we had the power of the car that was on factor 2 positive. So all those cars here are quite powerful, but those ones, well, they are not. So you can see different type of car and they are grouped with their characteristics. So if I go back to the PC sheet, uh, we can also have a biplot where you can have both the variable and the samples together. Then you have the contribution of the observations, square cosines of the observations, and that's all we have.